from Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. And welcome back to New York here, AWS Summit, the Cube. continue our coverage of what's happening here in the Big Apple. I'm John Walls, so I'm with Stu Biniman, and with this is, is maybe not the most prolific Cube guest of all time, but he's in the Hall of Fame, he really is, a Cube MVP for sure. It's good to have David Richards with us, the President, Chairman, CEO of Wendisco. Good to see you, sir. It's a pleasure to be back again, it feels like home. It is like home. We're going to get your own microphone, I think. You know? I know, <laughs> I need mean, the name on the back of the seat or something. This isn't quite a home game for you, all right? So you've got an office in Sheffield, England, you've yep. got an office out in the Valley, Silicon Valley. We got you right in the middle, I think, yeah. almost, don't we? So <laughs> exactly. we kind of split the difference for you this way. I always tell people I'm recolonizing the United States. I've been here for about 20 years, but I haven't changed the accent. <laughs> So, right. I'll get you all eventually. All right, well, another, another year or two, we'll see how that works for you. Um, big, big, I guess, six, seven months for you, right, as far as uh, some um, acquisitions you've done, some nice partnerships and, and arrangements you've done. Yeah, so as a, as a business, we've really progressed well in the first half of the year. I've got to be a little bit careful. We've got results uh, coming out September the 6th in London, but we did do a pre-announcement of uh, a business update. We Signed a you know, record big data cloud contract with a very large bank for over four million dollars. That was our largest ever, ever contract win. We signed a major retailer who we can't name, um, obviously, which is another sort of cloud object store, on-premises, uh, uh, big data win. And um, interestingly, we stopped burning cash and investors really like this kind of perfect storm of, you know, we, 175%, 173% growth in our cloud big data revenues, booking, sorry, combined with a flat cost base, which meant the first half of last year burning $5.4 million, down to virtually zero, just $600,000 in, in the first half. So investors really like that, we really like that, and it demonstrates you know, that perfect storm of flat cost base and growing uh, sales. So. David, I'm, I'm curious, does, you know, working with Amazon and your customers being in Amazon, does the speed and agility and everything like that contribute to that profitability? Well, Amazon kind of changes the game for us, for all vendors, right? Because nobody, you know, it used to be the sort of big four, five, six, whatever it is these days, consulting companies that had to implement ERP systems, all those complex, complex applications. I don't necessarily think they're the people, they're not the go-to people anymore for cloud, so it's, it's, it's down to, you know, uniqueness of technology. I mean, Amazon have got such a wide array. We were talking earlier about some of their announcements out today as they continue to go up the stack with applications and so on. So it, it does lend itself very well to small vendors with sticky, unique intellectual property and unique products and services that are going to really thrive in this, in this kind of cloud environment. So we've really enjoyed working with Amazon, but we're also working with the other cloud vendors as well. And I have to say, when we first saw the snowmobile and the snowball, well actually the snowmobile drive out on stage in New York, was it 12, 18 months ago? I, it's dog years so everything goes you know, seven right. times faster. Right. I was like laughing, I was like, how on earth can you possibly use uh, a truck to move data? But a customer came to us, a prospect came to us the other day who wants to move 100 petabytes of data. Now if you're going to use the public internet to do that, that's going to take a hell of a long time. So you, this idea of a mix between physical and digital data movement, I think, is it, to move, when moving to cloud is, is actually fascinating. I think it's a really fascinating uh, subject area, one that customers are definitely going to use. Yeah, you've got a great vantage point uh, looking at customers' migrations. Uh, yeah. it, it was actually something big in the keynote talking about, there's so many migrations out there that Amazon released in AWS migration hubs. So, Obviously, physics is always a challenge. Uh, you know, my legacy mindset. You know, customers. Uh, you know, we heard customer up on stage, and it's usually not. You know, you know, list and shift maybe for the private cloud, but for public cloud, I usually I need to rewrite. I need to do microservices. What is the friction for customers, and how are you and Amazon and the other clouds helping customers work through those challenges? Okay, so just to take a step back and think about the problems that happen at hyperscale data movement. So small scale data, gigabyte scale data, the stuff that you typically see in a relational database, they're not particularly big problems. It's kind of minimal outage, press pause, move data, make it consistent, and you're done. You, you, you know, you, you can have a sort of a small outage, maybe 15 minutes or even a day to move data. 
But when it gets to hyperscale, when it gets to petabyte scale, multi-terabyte scale data moves, that's when you have a problem. And that's really the problem that we solve. So the idea that you can move data that's moving and changing without an interruption to service from on-premise to cloud and support a hybrid cloud uh, topology for an elongated period of time is fascinating. I mean, I've, I was listening at a, an investor conference to the CEO of, uh, of VMware who was talking about, we're going to be in a situation of hybrid cloud for the next 20, 25 years because overnight not everybody can just repurpose every single application that they're running on-premise, whether it's in a mainframe application or relation, relational data application or wherever it is, an ERP application and repurpose that in cloud overnight. So we're going to have to gradually move and migrate those applications over. So it's highly likely we're going to be in a hybrid cloud environment for the foreseeable future. And that's actually fantastic news for us. I mean, we're moving, as I said, at scale companies into cloud with transactional data. And you know, nobody else can touch us in terms of the uniqueness of that IP, which is fantastic news for us. In, in terms of just big data, data in general, this, you know, Stu has one use for it, I have a different use for it. Um, it's going to live in a lot of different places. I mean, how, how are you, I guess, responding to different needs within your, uh, you know, your clients and, and trying to make them more effective, make them more efficient, and yet when you're dealing with more and more data, that's a big storm to handle. That's a great question. I, I, went to, um, I went to speak a couple of months ago to a new customer of ours who is a ma major healthcare provider. Uh, on, the, on the East Coast. And um, I kind of said to him, okay, you've had this Hadoop cluster for the past three years. Why are you calling us, you know, why now? Which is the question that I always ask our customers. Why, what changed? Why are you doing this right now? And maybe for the past three years, they've been putting legal data into this system. That's data that, who cares if you can't get access to it? We, we can move to telephone, we can move to emails, we can, we can go into an archive, into paper archive even, and find it. But the why now is that they're now putting patient record data, patient information, with regulated SLAs into this system. And that really is our sweet spot. As you get to, remember that investment thesis, small scale gigabyte outage is small outage. When you get into petabyte, exabyte scale, when you've got data sets that are a thousand, million times greater, it's linear to the quantum of data. The outage becomes a thousand or a million times greater. So that's kind of intolerable. So we love it when strategic applications, regardless of what the use case is, we could all have different, you know, it might be patient data, it might be retail information, it might be banking data, it might be customer retention information. When, that, when those strategic applications move onto this hyperscale infrastructure, you have to support RTO and RTP, and that's what we do. And, and is a byte a byte a byte? I mean, like, you have these thousands of needles in haystacks, right? I mean, how do you assign value to one as opposed to another? So this is another great question, and one that investors kind of ask me um, a lot. So we used to model our business um, from kind of the ground up, so we'd take the, you know, classic enterprise sales team, you'd have a sales and marketing organization that was quite large, you would um, multiply that by their quota and then multiply it by 66% because that's how many of them are going to be successful in selling product. Well, we completely threw that away when we launched the Wandisco Fusion, our new technology, ooh, early 2016. And that would, then we moved to a channel-based approach. So we have IBM, we have an OEM, 5,000 quota-carrying enterprise sales guys at IBM selling our products. That was a fantastic deal for us. Signed it in April 2016. And they've done in the first half of the first half of this year, I don't know, at least six million dollars in, uh, in sales that we've also announced. Um, and then we've got strategic partnerships with Amazon, with Microsoft, with Google, and we model our business by those channels. So we're not looking for needles in haystacks. We, we, don't, we could never hire enough. I mean, if we had to come into the market and say, we need to go and hire 5,000 enterprise sales guys, mm -hmm. we'd have to be you know, raising, you know, doing fundraisers like Uber or something. It would just be untenable. We, could, we couldn't do it. So we have a product that lends itself very well to a channel-based approach, and that's working very nicely for us. So we're not, we're not looking for, we're, look, we're just looking for haystacks. Somebody else can go and find the needle. Find the needle, right, right. David, how are your customers managing the pace of change these days? Uh, we said, you know, Amazon as an example, it's like every day there's three new services uh, coming out. Uh, are they excited? Are they completely overwhelmed? You know, what, what, what are you seeing these days? So I think it's classic sort of product adoption lifecycle stuff. The, the sort of technical enthusiasts, they love all this change. 
you know, the early stage companies that are in, implementing this new cloud-based technology, object store technology and so on, they're, they're managing very well. It's the, the later stage companies, you might go to and say, object store, and we'll go, what's object store? We're just getting our head around Hadoop that you and Hive and Pig and all this other stuff that you were talking about three years ago. You know, and, and sales guys going there now and saying, oh, no, 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 don't worry about Hadoop. Nobody's going to run Hadoop in the cloud. It's like, well, that's what you told me um, three years ago. So I think, I think the market's certainly divided. I think you're going to see, uh, as we move up product adoption lifecycle, you're going to see lots and lots and lots of interesting moves happen. I mean, the, the companies that seem to be owning cloud, I mean, I think Alibaba's coming up really fast. We're seeing them doing some interesting things. Obviously, they've got dominance in the, the Chinese market. Amazon first mover, Microsoft's futures dependent on cloud. So they all have their different spin and different take on applications that they're going to run in cloud. I think there is. I think it's a bit like the cell phone industry. There's lots and lots of different plans, lots and lots of different confusing nomenclature. That's going to settle out in the next couple of years. But there's unquestionably, if you look at, look at the audience here today, unquestionably large scale movement of applications and data into cloud. Well, we appreciate the time, as always. Great to see you. Um, another notch in your cube belt. <laughs> so congratulations for that. And, and maybe you can settle in the New York for a day or two. You said your travels have had you flip flop it back and forth between oh. England and here. So maybe you can settle in for a, a day or two. Yeah, I need to replicate myself. I need, I need to put myself in at least two different <laughs> places at the same time. Live data replication right here. <laughs> All right, David, thanks for being with us. David Richards. Thank you, thanks All guys. Right. Back with more here on theCUBE, we continue our coverage of AWS Summit from New York City right after this break.